Hi guys and welcome to another Whiskey Geek review with me, Ben. Today, I'm reviewing the Springbank 10. Oh, Springbank. This is a Campbelltown distillery uh, that has been going from, I wouldn't say strength to strength, they've been making a consistently fantastic whiskey for um, a good while, but popularity wise, they're just growing and growing and growing, which is making the whiskey harder and harder to come by. So perhaps I'm shooting myself in the foot by doing this review, because those of you who already know that it's good whiskey don't need me to tell you about it. And those of you who aren't currently buying it, I could kind of do with you not becoming competition. So I've got a selection of some Springbank bottles here. Springbank, the same team also make uh, Long Row, Hazelburn and uh, Kilkerran whiskey in Glen Gyle. Um, but their recent releases have been snapped up within like fully within a week of um, them hitting the shelves. It's becoming super hard to buy this whiskey. <clears throat> I've got a bottle of the 15, 12 year old cask strength and this almost finished bottle of 10 year old. But all of them are quite old bottles. Uh, that cask strength for those of you who are uh, bottle chasers, for those of you who are obsessive about your cask strength, this is the 56.2% version. Um, and for the rest of us, this 10 year old, wow, this 10 year old is dated 2017. So it had been sat on the shelves for a couple of years before I bought it. Nowadays, that just doesn't happen. The second it hits the shelf, someone's coming in, bouncing between stores and grabbing up as much of it as they can. So Springbank is based in Campbelltown. Campbelltown being this nice little fishing village on a Western Peninsula, um, close to Arran and Isla, although you have to take a ferry to get to either of those islands. But it's a nice little hub of fantastic Scotch whiskies. There's a lot of history in that area. And um, this is a family owned distillery, family business, J&A, Mitchell and Co. They have a long history, ancestry in making good whiskey. And so these guys, um, they not only know how to make good whiskey, they importantly know how to present good whiskey. So there's some commentary on the back here, but it's not chill filtered, it's not colored, and they warn people, and I don't understand why other distillery producers who use this as an argument to chill filter whiskey don't just do the same thing. It literally says on the bottle, uh, Free of artificial colouring, also it's not chill filtered, this will cause a slight natural haze to form when it is cold, but this will disappear when the temperature returns to normal. So for all those people who drop a blob of ice in it and it starts to go cloudy and they think there's something wrong with the whiskey, it says right here on the bottle, that's natural. If it doesn't do that, it's not natural. So you should want to see that when you make your whiskey cold. Why? that isn't common knowledge and why other whiskey producers don't just state the same thing is beyond me. Now I've been trying quite hard to try and plan a trip over to Campbelltown. Um, we're possibly going to do it between Christmas and New Year, not sure. But um, it's the third time this year that I've, I've tried to make it happen. And uh, it's kind of, it's quite awkward to get to because you've, you've got to, you either get a ferry over or drive two hours north to then double back down on yourself down the the peninsula to get to Campbelltown so it's not an easy place to get to but on top of that I want it to be a whiskey centric visit obviously I'm going to Campbelltown specifically because of the distilleries because of the whiskey production in the area and everything else about the village is kind of ancillary to that so for me I want to make sure that it's uh, got whiskey there for me and the second that this stuff hits the shelf the word spreads people drive for hours grab it and the stock's depleted again. Not only that, but the other distillery in Campbelltown, Glen Scotia, um, aren't even doing tours at the minute. I think because staff levels are relatively low and the state of play with COVID means that they're not, they're not in full swing doing tours and letting people experience the distillery. So I don't know if it's gonna happen this year, but I'm desperate to make it happen as soon as it can be a worthwhile trip. Anyway, enough of my chatting rubbish let's look at the whiskey this is the 10 year old presented at 46% and I've got this color down as a shade 10 Amontillado let's explore the nose so initially it hits you it opens with this really quite farmyard this robust uh, hay earthy a little bit damp 
cereals and grains. But then it begins to open up and it becomes a bit lighter and um, the oiliness, the, that robustness really becomes apparent. All these little sweet niceties begin to emerge. There's um, kind of a sugar brittle, a little bit of cinnamon, some fruits, uh, tangerine and, and orchard, soft orchard fruits. There's quite a light nuttiness to it, playing into that kind of creamy oiliness and, and some barley shows. So there's this little oddity that people label Campbelltown funk or Campbelltown grunge. Um, it's this, it seems to be a part of the geography, a part of the area's DNA. You find it probably heaviest for me in Springbank um, or most prominent in Springbank, but you also get it in Longro, Kilcarran, and in Glen Scotia. Glen Scotia being a completely different distillery and team. So it seems to be um, integral to the DNA of Campbelltown. And the process of trying to label Campbelltown funk um, is in itself quite fun. It's, it's an oddity, it's peculiar and it shifts and it changes, but it's this, it ties into the robustness, into the oiliness. It's like a background savory element. And so I've, I flip between um, this kind of soapstone, slaty, oily, um, and those farmyard, uh, mostly dry cereal crops, that kind of flavor, which is how I'd probably describe it now with this whiskey. But then sometimes, uh, depending on the day, depending on the whiskey, I'll come to it and I'll kind of feel that it's more like a sourdough. So still some of those uh, cereal elements, but uh, a little bit solventy and this peanut brittle. And it's all of these weird, savory, peculiar flavors that, that come together and, and make the whiskey more interesting to explore. Um, kind of gives it more depth, I suppose. So let's give it a try on the palate. It's an interesting whiskey on the palate as well. It starts off and it's light and it's sweet and there's barley. It's quite refreshing. But then this uh, brininess begins to develop, a uh, kind of a minerality, again, that stone slaty element. And it becomes almost fizzy. It's like a carbonated drink. It's not, it's not a prickle, it's not hot, but it's fizzy on your palate. There's a nice vanilla tied into that minerality, a little bit creamy, nice mouthfeel. And then there's this nice rounded spice to it. It's all, almost like um, allspice, ground allspice, but with some extra, extra nutmeg and ginger. Pushing through into the finish is predominantly that salinity, the brininess. It begins to dry out and you get more, there's this still some of that spice, but this dry wood a non-aggressive fizziness. Some of that, the sweet elements, the tangerine, the vanilla are still clinging on. And it's long. It sits with you for quite a while. So I'm rating this one a solid 85%. It's a really interesting and fun whiskey to sit with and explore. On the one hand, you've got all this earthiness, brininess, the cereals, minerality, but it's all balanced against a sweetness, so against some citrus and vanilla and elements which play nicely off of each other. I also find that it's not, um, it's not too heavily peated, so it's not pushing anything out, and it's not overwhelmed by cask influence. There's plenty of that spirit influence for you to sit and explore and try and put your finger on what Campbelltown funk is or what it means to you. But is it worth the hype? I would probably say at this price point, the way this whiskey is presented, yeah, it is. Next time I get a chance to replace this bottle, I will do. So thanks very much for watching guys. Hope you've enjoyed this little whiskey review. If you have, feed the YouTube algorithm, like, comment, subscribe, and hope to see you in the next one. Cheers.